So you'd like to get an agent for your act? Okay, let me walk you through how to get an agent, at least the way that's worked for me uh, several times that I've done it. Getting an agent comes down to two basic things you need to do. One, you need to arm your agent. You have a salesperson on your team. Two, you need to already be making, already be making some rain when you show up to ask for an agent. I'll take them in order. Number one, you need to have a sales tactic for your agent. When you get an agent, what you're hiring is a sales member. Uh, you're hiring a salesperson, salesman, saleswoman. That's what you're getting. So they're going to need immediately things with which to sell your show. <clears throat> That's important to them. They're going to need a website. Most people nowadays, I would say, don't, don't use a website. Even when I sell tickets, I mostly sell them to the Facebook link or through Instagram. They click to another website like Well Attended or any of the others you could use online and they buy a ticket. <clears throat> Excuse me. But agents are old school. Some of their clients are old school. Some of the agents and clients are older folks and they want a website. They want one place where they can find photos and write-ups and bios and press and press release and uh, videos all in one spot, centrally localized. It's hard to find that stuff on Facebook. I agree there. Scrolling through your feed can be a nightmare on your personal page trying to find your video. But that's what you need. You need a press release. Something you can take and just copy paste and switch out this name of the club at that time, at that place, this name of the show, etc. <clears throat> you also need press, press clippings. You need to get out there and do shows and get write-ups. They need someone else saying you're good. I'm saying my show is good. My agent is saying my show is good. Who else is saying my show is good? What third party has come along? Press reviews are easier because you assume it's a third party I don't know. Though I guess my friend could work for the Chicago Reader. But even friends and family, fans of the show, by fans I mean you performed at a coffee house and they're writing reviews on Facebook. That'll help too. Let's me know that while you're new and inexperienced, you got promise, you got potential. It shows me something. You also need um, press release, press, headshots. Good photos. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're in the variety arts. So you're not just an actor, although you may also be an actor, but you're a ventriloquist, a mime, a juggler, a burlesque performer, a sideshow, freak show performer, magician, something like that. You're odd. You're also visual, which means your photos are going to be way harder. You have to do way more of them, and they're going to be tough. If you're a magician, a juggler, or even a little bit sideshow, look up some first. So you don't do the same crap everyone else is doing. If you want a good example of this, you look at magicians showing their hands on Tumblr. There's an entire Tumblr of magicians just going, and that's what they're doing as their promo pieces. Card fans and all this crap. All magicians have the same headshots. Don't. Jugglers are a close second. Watch yourself and be careful. Sideshow performers like me tend to be, you know, working in a Wendy's parking lot at three in the morning. We're lucky if we even have photos of our work. And when we do, they tend to be pretty typical. Once you've got headshots, you need a video. You see, this is before you even contact the agent, you understand. You, you can't contact an agent and say, please sell my show, because they're just going to say, great, sounds like a great show. How do I sell that? Are you going to call every one of my clients and pitch the show like you did me? You need video. Video for us is a little easier. Watch your sound quality. I'm tired of seeing videos where this is it, and you put a phone in the back of the room. It's not the 1940s. Microphones can be expensive. Trust me, I own a bunch. But hire someone to come do sound, put a lavalier on you or something. Video can be expensive. Sound, engin sound engineers aren't as expensive. The person costs the same, but the equipment they bring with them doesn't cost as much. Once you've got all that, now you're ready to approach an agent. Because you've done some shows, you've got some press, you've got a press release, you've got headshots, you've got video, you've armed them. They may ask you to make other things, brochures, or in our case, we made uh, specific little books for trade shows. I was going to see if I could find one. I don't have one. Specific little books for trade shows and such. But that your agent will help guide you on, if they're any good. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is just crap. Always. Problem with being a whiskey raspy voice. How do you get an agent now? You've got step one. Step two, make a little rain. How are you going to prove to me that you are worth what you think you're worth? You have to come to an agent. I'm going to play the agent. Here's why I say come to me. I've never been an agent. This is just how I get one. You're going to come to me and you're going to say, here's all the stuff I have that I use to sell my show. And here are the contracts, not necessarily the exact contracts, but the money I've been getting. 
and I want to help. I want your help with this. I have a business that's starting to take off and I'd like to now hire someone to take over part of the business. That's how we got our agent. Now it was Kevin Lapine and I at the time, and we did kind of a sneaky version where we got about eh, $20,000 in contracts, I guess, for a fall from college. So for about a three or four month period. And then Kevin started just cold calling agencies. And the pitch we gave them was this. Hey, we're looking to expand in the college market, but also it's gotten a little too busy for us. We don't want to handle all these contracts. So what I'd like to do is turn those over to you. Starting next year, those will be contracts with your percentage in your pocket. And we're hoping you will then add to that percentage. So what we're telling an agent is, would you like 20% of $20,000 for free? Only a fool would turn us down. Every agent said yes. And then we picked our agent from the pile of agents who said yes. With the expectation that you take your 20% of 20,000, absolutely next year, that's yours. We did all the work. You just rebook the gig. Assume we're not going to screw it up, I guess, a little bit of faith. We're not going to blow it this time and not get the call next year. You get that money. That's a how you do handshake. Now we expect you to double, triple, quadruple that in colleges and free us up from colleges so we can work on theaters. That was our expectation and that was our pitch. We already had money to put in your pocket. This made it easy. So there you go. Quick review. One, have some sales material. That costs you money. Takes a lot of time. Two, make a little rain. I don't want somebody useless. I can also book nothing for no one effortlessly. Bring me a, a client. Bring me talent that can actually do the job and I will help move them forward. That's what an agent should do. If you have specific agents on uh, specific questions on agents or agencies, you can always message me directly. I'm not hard to find any of my websites, Facebook, or even if you make it a comment on YouTube, I may not respond. Maybe a little too personal to give too much information out. But if you'll message me somehow personally, I'll respond to you. I'm not big time enough. I don't have people. This is it. This is me. You're in my office. I am not a big deal. Thanks so much for watching. On behalf of Well Attended and Danger Circus, I'm Tom Britton.